Billions of people in the world have received the mRNA vaccine for COVID-19. Critics have questioned its long-term safety and how it may interact with the human genome. A recent peer-reviewed article published in a journal called Current Issues in Molecular Biology reported the Pfizer mRNA vaccine was turned into DNA in human liver cell line. The article has created a buzz on the internet. Let's take a closer look at what was reported in this paper. Are the results and conclusions adequately reviewed before publication? I will also share my personal experience working with the publishing company that published this article. I'm Dr. Hon, and welcome to my classroom. The article reported high levels of BNT162B2 or the Pfizer vaccine in HUH7 cells and changes in gene expression of long interspersed nuclear element 1 or line 1, which is an endogenous reverse transcriptase. So, what is the HUH7 cell line? HUH cells are immortal liver tumor cells that can grow forever if they are given enough nutrients. They are good for use in hepatitis C virus studies. These tumor cells contain many mutations, insertions, and deletions, and extra genes in their DNA. Their mutation in P53 also allows that to grow and spread in the body. In a simple way of saying, the DNA or genome of HUH7 cells is very messed up compared to normal cells in humans. What is Line 1? Line 1 is a reverse transcriptase that we carry and comprises about 17% of our genome. They use a copy and paste mechanism to increase their numbers in the genome. These jumping elements are called retrotransposons. However, lines prefer their own RNA and don't randomly reverse transcribe just any other RNAs. Line 1 is active during embryogenesis but they are suppressed in other healthy adult cells. Line 1, however, is very active in tumor formation. Is the cell line used in the experiment appropriate? Based on the fact that cancer cells are known to have increased line 1 expression, in order to strongly prove the true effect of the BNT162B2 effect on line 1, the author should have performed additional control experiments with a normal cell line. However, they did not. Could they have used a normal cell line? Yes. For example, the human umbilical vein endothelial cells, or HUVIX, are primary cells find lining the blood vessel, and they are commercially available for experiments. The author did not provide an explanation of why they only used one genetically abnormal cancer cell line in their experiment. How did the authors do the experiment? The authors seeded 200,000 cells per well in 24 well plates. Each well received 0, 0 0.5, 1, and 2 microgram per mil of the Pfizer mRNA vaccine. Each dose was also tested for 6 hours, 24 hours, and 48 hours. After 48 hours, the cells were harvested. RNA was extracted for PCR, and in other experiments, genomic DNA was extracted from the cells. The second question is, is the vaccine dose appropriate? The authors explained the Pfizer vaccine dose given in humans is equivalent to 100 microgram per mil. Previous RET studies showed up to 18% of the total dose distributed to RET liver, so they chose the highest dose at 2 micrograms per mil for each treatment samples. In other words, 200,000 cells in each well received up to 2 micrograms per mil of the mRNA vaccine. Previous studies estimated that there are about 139 plus or minus 25 million cells per gram of liver in human, and the human liver average weighs about 1,500 grams then approximately the whole liver has billions of cells. 
If up to 20 microgram per mil of vaccine is distributed to human liver with billions of cells, then adding 2 microgram per mil of vaccine to only 200,000 cells in the experiment was extremely high compared to what would have been given in humans. And again, these experiments were previously done in rats, and rats are not little tiny humans. And the distributions are different. So what did they find? As expected, the vaccine's spike mRNA level was increased, but they only see increased line one expression compared to control at six hours by giving two microgram per mil, while lower BNT one six two B two concentration decreased line one expressions at all other time points. Notice. The controls in 24 hours and 48 hours showed higher line one expression than all vaccine-treated samples. In terms of statistics, the authors used a two-tailed student t-test to compare these differences, which is not the correct statistical test for multiple time-dependent comparisons. A NOVA test. That tells you if there are any statistical differences between the averages of three or more independent groups would have been a more appropriate test. The study also showed a small fragment of the spike protein turned into DNA and was amplified in PCR experiment. This fragment was about one tenth of the whole spike protein gene. It showed that this small fragment was reverse transcribed. The message would have been stronger if the authors also showed another portion of the spike protein gene was also reverse transcribed. And what did the authors conclude? The authors tried to connect the observed reverse transcribed DNA fragment in HUH7 liver cancer cells with the line one reverse transcriptase. The study showed an association between the two events. There was no causality effect established in the article. The authors only provided speculation in their discussion. What could they have done differently? In order to prove line one was responsible for reverse transcribed DNA fragment, the authors need to do a type of experiment called knockout. This means the line one gene expression needs to be silent. So that the cell do not make line one protein. If knocking out the line one showed it block the reverse transcription of the spike fragment, then line one would be responsible for the reverse transcription. Regretfully, the authors did not do this experiment to strengthen their argument. The authors also did not do the necessary experiments to determine this DNA sequence is actually integrated into the genome. The presence of a small fragment does not prove genome integration. Now, for those of you that are new here, you may wonder if I'm qualified to review this article. MDPI is the publisher of this article. MDPI also publishes many other journals in almost every scientific discipline. I'm a frequent reviewer for journals published by MDPI. And I'm also serving as a guest editor for a different journal under MDPI. I can testify that most articles are reviewed by at least two to four reviewers. However, most of the time, the reviewers are asked to complete their report within seven days for this publisher. The limited time for reviewers may sometimes lead to a less rigorous review process. To sum up, this article showed results in cancer cell lines that are known to have increased line one expression. The vaccine dose given to the cells was also extremely high compared to actual vaccine dose exposure in humans. Therefore, we need to be very careful not to overgeneralize the findings in this article in normal cell lines. And in humans, if this is your first time here, this channel is about health topics that is beyond just the pandemic news. If you would like to follow for more content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And thank you for all of your support. And I hope to see you next week again. And like always, please stay safe, stay healthy. Take care. Bye.